we all have our list of games we simply do not enjoy. This group can range from software that is universally considered terrible, to even popular games that make you feel like you simply are missing something. My love for the Saturn has led me to play many, many games for the platform, some of which rank as my favorites of all time. I'd be lying to you though if I said the system didn't have a healthy dose of games that I dislike. And that's the basis of this episode. I will be looking at 10 games that I have had issues with in the past that kept me from enjoying them. Sometimes it was the presentation that bothered me, others rubbed me the wrong way with its gameplay or some other design element. I tried to choose games that I haven't played in depth for quite some time, and avoided games I knew had zero chance at redemption. I hope you guys enjoy Second Chance Saturn Games. I don't think Mr. Bones ever had any real chance with me back when it came out. I was fascinated with arcade gameplay for much of my early life preferring beat-em-ups, shoot-em-ups, and platformers over everything else. Mr. Bones was a mixed genre game where variety was its strength, along with its musical theme that was influenced by blues music. I picked it up at its release and the opening two stages sent me running for a refund. I absolutely hated it. The controls felt terrible and the visuals were about as off-putting as they could possibly be. Yet people around me claimed to have loved it. Could it be that I simply didn't play enough of it to really see what it offered? Well, I went in this time with the intent on seeing much more of the game. In fact, I beat the entire first disc this time. The first thing I can say is, is that Mr. Bones has an impressive amount of variety in its gameplay design. Virtually every stage is an entirely new game. Sometimes you are running from something, sometimes you are platforming, and sometimes you are doing things that just have no equivalent in any other game at all. Mr. Bones also has some incredible music-based segments that allow you to jam out on instruments like the guitar and drums, and some of the cinemas capture the rhythm and blues theme extremely well. The deeper I played, the more impressed I was with the theme and the amount of different gameplay styles that are here, some of which knock off popular arcade games like Tempest. So, is Mr. Bones redeemed? No, no it's not. The most prevalent problem with Mr. Bones remains its gameplay. While I found the sheer volume of styles impressive, many of them have enough issues to make it extremely frustrating. Mr. Bones tends to be a bit sluggish in his control, lacking the responsiveness and gracefulness that a platformer needs to be appealing. But it goes beyond that because the developers decided to make it so as you take damage, you lose pieces of your body, making the gameplay even more frustrating as you fumble with trying to deal with the control and picking up pieces of your body. Since some form of platforming dominates much of the content here, that's not a good thing, leading to some stages that require countless attempts to defeat. This leaves the more innovative levels as your lone source of enjoyment, but they are spread out pretty good and can be easily blocked by a stage that completely destroys your desire to play. And that's my takeaway from Mr. Bones here. I was able to find a bit more appreciation in its theme and variety, but still feel that its gameplay lacks the polish and fun factor it truly needed to be something special. That old saying that it's a jack of all trades and a master of none springs to mind here. I can't fault those of you that enjoy it, but for me, Mr. Bones just doesn't play well enough for me to see the end. When Bug was released for the Saturn, I was so excited to play its 3D gameplay and killer visuals. I mean, 3D platformers were a brand new thing, so the appeal was instant and undeniable for fans of the more traditional 2D games. Unfortunately, Bug lacked appeal on almost every level. I didn't care for its visuals or irritating sound effects, nor its confining gameplay that was often handicapped with cheap deaths and enemies that had far more damage potential than you could ever have hoped to match. 
It's damn hard too, which always made me laugh since it was certainly aimed at young kids. Since I hadn't sat down and played Bugs seriously in many years, it was time to revisit the little green guy and see if I had been wrong. I put a few hours into it and came away feeling pretty much the same. Bugs' biggest issue is the lack of variety in its gameplay, cheaply designed stages, and a claustrophobic design that never really feels like a game with 3D movement. Despite the polygons, this is very much still a 2D game in how it plays. But it's the design of the stages and how they move that really grates on me the most. Each time you look left or right, the screen has a snap-like jerking that causes you to move slightly, which can lead to some situations where you fall off platforms. There are also stage dangers hidden all over the place that you simply cannot see until you jump or fall, which leads to deaths that otherwise never should have happened. This lends a frustration to this game that lies outside of the legitimate challenge of strong level design, making you repeat stuff simply because you couldn't see it and you just fell off the damn screen. I did love some of the boss encounters and later stages finally do start to offer some decent variety to the visuals. Bug was never truly a bad game, but it has enough problems in its basic design that its appeal takes a hell of a hit. I do recommend you play it, as those with more patience and tolerance for these shortcomings are likely to enjoy this a whole lot more. Croc was going to be the Saturn's redemption for me back when it was released. 3D platformers were not a big genre on the Saturn. A 3D Sonic was MIA, and I never cared much for Bug. I had loved Super Mario 64, and I was desperate for something similar on Sega's console. Croc was nothing of the sort, however. He was stiff, lacked precision, and perhaps worst of all, had a camera that fought you at every turn. I hated it from the moment I pressed start and have felt that way ever since. Getting back into Croc all these years later, I have to admit, I tempered my expectations down from a Mario 64 equivalent and went in just looking to adjust to its gameplay. Surprisingly, I had a lot more fun with it. Playing Croc with a bit more patience results in a much more tolerable game. Croc is much slower and deliberate than other 3D platformers, requiring massive amounts of patience and adjustments to every single jump and movement before they're made. I was able to get much further in it than ever before, playing water stages and areas that were much bigger and more complex than anything in the beginning. The increase in variety and newfound patience for its gameplay allowed me to stop and take notice of a few things. First, for a third-party Saturn 3D engine, Croc is actually a decent-looking game with nice textures, colors, and character models. So much so, I'd even go so far as to say for a game of this type, it was really good-looking. Croc also had a pretty good soundtrack to it, a fitting array of happy and upbeat tunes that suit each stage quite well. Not everything was peachy, however. I still found myself struggling with the camera during gameplay, particularly the way it swayed as you moved into position during jumps. Croc also has an irritating way of missing items that were right on top of him, almost as if the hit detection was way off. These things create more frustration than a game like Croc really needs, particularly since its tedious gameplay traits will give most people issues anyway. Still, I did find a lot more enjoyment here than before, and while I still wouldn't rank it among the best in the genre for that era, I do feel that it isn't the worthless pile of excrement I did before. I have a long history of loving Batman video games. Some of them are among the best pieces of software ever in my eyes, but every so often one would come along and just suck to high heaven. Batman Forever was one such game. This was a beat-em-up from Acclaim, their one and only attempt at an arcade game, and it was brought home to the Saturn intact and ready to play. But I did not enjoy it. 
I hated the murky, digitized visuals that made up its hideous presentation. The gameplay was too fast and stalled constantly by power-ups that would completely bring the rhythm and flow of the gameplay to a grinding halt. The difficulty would spike out of the blue, with drone enemies capable of trapping you in damage loops that would eat entire life bars. Needless to say, I was not a fan. Going into it this time, I decided to embrace its flashy gameplay and try to enjoy it. I still feel this game is ugly as sin. The presentation is just too muddy and lacks the finer details of hand-drawn art. The special effects are equally ugly, filling the screen with a blur of colors for simple power-up animations. Most of the time, digitized pre-rendered characters bring with it outstanding animation, but even that is piss poor here. While all the sprites scale forward and backwards well enough, the actual movement of their bodies is rarely more than a few frames. Good news though, I was actually able to find some enjoyment in the gameplay here. I kept my hero moving and attacking constantly, trying to avoid the traps that would equal insta-death from its BS enemy combo system. I still fell victim to it from time to time, but I dished out more than I received. I still hated the way the action was interrupted by power-up animations, but I got used to it and did finally begin to see why people enjoy this game. The combo system is quite extensive, and the variety of weapons you can procure can turn the bat into a killing machine. There are much better beat-em-ups on the Saturn, both in visuals and overall design, but there is some fun to be had here if you can stomach its over-the-top presentation. I want to be fully transparent here, I do not enjoy Aerosmith's music and I hated the arcade version of Revolution X. Their awful music blaring in the background as droves of the same enemies littered the screen was not my idea of fun. When it came home to the Saturn, one of its lone positives, it being a gun game, was even missing and it supported none of the Saturn's light gun peripherals. I dismissed it and planned to never return. All these years later, I decided to prepare myself better. Instead of fumbling with the control pad, I broke out the shuttle mouse to see what I could do. Nope, this game is still awful start to finish. While I was much more accurate than before, the gameplay is just a mindless exercise of aiming. You never need to reload, the enemies just keep pouring into view and it's impossible not to take damage no matter how well you perform. The boss encounters are the worst. Overly long, exceptionally tedious segments of gameplay you are likely to encounter in any game based in this genre. They just keep going and going and going to the point where you just want to stop playing. The digitized visuals do scale really well and provide a solid sense of the arcade's experience, but there are times of extreme slowdown that is felt not just in the movement of the screen, but also in the rate at which your weapons fire. Aerosmith's terrible music is still here though you can at least turn it way, way down. The two positives of this game are the two-player mode and the ability to choose your route throughout the story. That variety makes replay a bit higher, though I can't imagine many will want to take it. This is a shallow game that's better left in the arcade, where at least you had a gun to use. Being a sports fan was easy on Sega's hardware. Aside from the usual assortment of stuff from EA and other third parties, Sega always had plenty for you to play as well. The NBA Jam series had been on everything from Sega. Genesis, Sega CD, 32X, Saturn, you name it and a version was there for you. So when NBA Jam Extreme was announced, I was looking forward to more basketball goodness, this time with a fully 3D engine. But my god was the end product so bad. Awful performance was capped off by terrible textures and models to make one of the worst sports games on the Saturn. I couldn't make it a full game before I pulled the plug and never touched it again. 
I decided to give it another go after not playing it for so long. Could I have been wrong and was simply just too hard on it? Not at all. In fact, this piss poor game is aged even worse than I could have imagined. What should be a simple game of 2 on 2 basketball is just torn apart by its sluggish and choppy frame rate and what has to be some of the worst texture work on the platform. I mean just look at this mess. There are fully 5 on 5 simulation basketball games on the Saturn with better visuals. How could they get just 4 on screen players so wrong? But it's the performance that dooms this turd. The choppiness mars any finesse you can have with the available moves. And even normally easy additions like the commentary is absolutely terrible. This is particularly bad when you play the Saturn's NBA Jam Tournament Edition right after, making you realize just how broken this excuse of a sports game actually is. There's no redemption for this garbage. It's a bad playing, bad looking, and bad sounding version of a much better 2D game series. Peyton for three. That's gotta hurt. Yes. Ouch. Stoudemire. Boom shakalaka. Kemp. Unbelievable. I remember being really excited for The Lost World when it was released. Who wouldn't be stoked to play as dinosaurs in a brand spanking new 3D side scrolling engine? The bad news was is that you start out as a worthless compy that can barely defend itself. Even once you get past that snooze fest, you are met with poor stage design, choppy performance, and platforming that'll make you want to pull your hair out. I put a few hours in back then, and that was all I could stomach. This time, I planned on seeing every playable character and really finding out if this game had something to offer me. And you know what? It has very little to offer no matter how much you play it. This is still a poor running, ugly game with terrible platforming mechanics and gameplay that is hobbled by lag. Everything feels like it's a half a second behind your inputs, and even when you adjust to that, the cheap platforming segments have you doing areas over and over again. To make it worse, even the playable characters that should kick ass like the Human Hunter and the T-Rex still play badly, never giving you any real sense of accomplishment. Things just nosedive by the end when you become the human prey, and all you can do is run for your life in segments that look and play as poorly as anything I've seen on the platform. No amount of patience or tolerance can make this game any good, and I'll not be giving it another chance anytime soon. Yeah, I know, some of you are like, what the hell is Mega Man X3 doing here? My history goes like this. Rockman X3 was released in early 1996 in Japan for the Saturn. Looking forward to it, I picked it up day one and had it overnighted to me. I was expecting a massively upgraded version of the Super Nintendo game, and instead, I was greeted with a visually identical game that had borders on the side to boot. It did have a new soundtrack and some full motion video cinemas, but I can't say I cared much. I had just spent nearly $100 for a 32-bit game that was not really any better than the game that came before it on the Super Nintendo. Needless to say, I was not impressed and sold it. I harbored a resentment towards the game for years, unwilling to play it any further. Sometime later, I picked up a disc-only copy of the Japanese game, and it has sat in my collection virtually untouched outside of a few captured minutes of gameplay from my YouTube channel here. Now is the time to take this one out and give it another go. No expectations this time of big upgrades, and I just took it at face value for the game it actually is. I'm really happy that I did because I enjoyed this so much more this way. The Mega Man X games were always fun to play at the most basic level. The tried and true gameplay was a mix of run and gun action and a bit of platforming and it's really easy to get into and enjoy. I love the ability to play any stage I wanted to in any order, each one having hidden power-ups you needed to find as well. The soundtrack is exceptional, and some of this stuff is worth listening to outside the game. 
It isn't as well designed as the original Mega Man X game in my opinion, suffering a tad from series fatigue by this point. But it still isn't a bad experience at all. It definitely could have and should have been more impressive on the Saturn, but looking at it for what it is instead of what I expected it to be made a world of difference. Ninpin Men Maru was a late release 3D platformer for the Saturn that was quite similar to Croc in many ways. I thought it played just as funky, clunky, and rough, and I found very little joy in playing it. I decided to go into it very much the same way that I had Croc for this very episode, and stopped trying to make the little ninja penguin do what I wanted, and instead concentrated on the mechanics the way they were presented to me. At first my opinion didn't change much. This was still difficult to control and the platforming mechanics were brutally imprecise. I kept at it though and as I got deeper in the game, I started to get a feel for the way the jumping worked and then something happened. I started doing well. So well I began to zoom through stages left and right. Shockingly, these stages stopped being the tiny boxes of the opening world and actually began to open up into areas that were much more fun to play. There was still a funkiness to its animation and the way the camera is tied to your movements, and that's going to be a hell of a hurdle to most people playing this for the first time. It's a powerful motivator to put the controller down and not play it anymore. The good news is, is that you do get used to it with a bit of patience, and the late game here is definitely better off for it. You watch enough of my content and you know I am not a fan of isometric gameplay. That meant of course that Spot Goes to Hollywood for the Saturn was an immediate miss for me. I couldn't play this game worth a damn. The control was completely from the viewpoint of the on-screen character, which meant that if you press the left you go to his left, right to his right, and so on. I couldn't play this for more than 10 minutes before frustration set in and the deaths began to mount. Trying it again here, I was met with much more of the same. I was immediately frustrated with the control scheme, and again, death after death occurred. I decided to switch up my strategy from there, and instead of trying to micromanage the gameplay by picking up all the little dots and collectibles, I started beelining it straight for the exit in a mad dash of survival. This simplified gameplay a bit and allowed me to start to get a feel for the way it played. I started to actually beat a few stages and then got introduced to some new gameplay mechanics that I enjoyed very much. Some of these stages are still crazy hard for me with these controls, and I don't think I'd ever be good enough to defeat it. Still, I got further here than I ever had, and I definitely enjoyed some of the easier sections that allowed me more room to move around. I can definitely see how those of you that don't have any problems playing these type of games enjoy it and my opinion is certainly quite a bit higher than it was before. Playing these games for hours made me realize a few things about video games. Patience and expectation make up a huge part of how you enjoy this hobby. You go into a game expecting one thing and then get another, enjoying yourself becomes much harder. In turn, if something about a game tries your patience early on, again, enjoying yourself becomes much harder. That basically covers every single game in this episode. There was something about these that turned me off of them pretty quickly, crushing either my patience, expectations, or both. 
coming at them now today with a much more open mind and willingness to accept them for what they were, I found I was able to tolerate much more than I ever had before. After some thought, I think this may be the fundamental differences between each and every one of us when it comes to how we see game software. Some of us have a bit more and a bit less patience for certain things, greatly impacting our enjoyment of it. As I've gotten older, I've come to terms that people are different and the smallest things can make or break our enjoyment of the different types of media out there. I am no better judge of a game than any of you, and all I offer is my very subjective opinion for entertainment and conversational purposes. If you enjoyed any of these games, you don't need my approval or anyone else's. It's okay that someone else doesn't like a game you do. Arguing about it is like arguing a favorite food or color. You like and dislike the things you do for very specific reasons, and nothing anyone else has to say about it will ever make a damn bit of difference. I'm Sigalord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.